Welcome to Sharing the Journey. You're with Dr. Stephen Ross Sinclair. Today we've got another great scripture for you. If you can get your Bibles and follow me and go to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, starting at verse 1, going down up to verse 6. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered, so many gathered, that there was no room left, nor even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Amen. Some men came bringing to him a paraplegic, carried by four of them, and since they couldn't get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus. Amen. And after digging through it, lowered the mat that the paraplegic was lying on. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paraplegic, Son, your, son, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Des, that is quite an illustration there. Um, how does that relate today in the 21st century? How does that relate to, to, to us? Here we see uh, the f a faith, incredible faith, of a, parap true. a paraplegic, yes. a crippled man. Yes, absolutely. I mean, and um, he was determined mm. to try and get close to Jesus. Amen. And the guys carrying him as well. They were all determined. Absolutely. I mean, so it was a joint effort absolutely. of faith mm. because they they had heard yes. and they believed that uh, the only answer for this crippled man yes. was to be close to the man named Jesus. Right. And I really believe that's profound because that really is the, the truth of yes. today. <laughs> because <Yes. laughs> the only, only thing we can do in this life mm. is to be close to the man Jesus. That's so true, Des. That's it in a nutshell, isn't it? Because, you it know, well, no matter what's going on in your life, financial pressure, yeah. um, health issues, I mean, family issues, Everything. relational <laughs> issues, I mean, the only thing that can solve you and help you in all these issues in life is, is being close to Jesus. <laughs> That's 100%. I mean, so this crippled uh, man, he understood the only thing that he could do was to get close as possible mm -hmm. to the man named Jesus. Amen. And he believed That's... that Jesus was the only one yes. that could uh, heal him and uh, set him free. He had faith. And that, that's what faith is about. That's so true. I mean, you know, look at the, the great book of Hebrews. Mm. And Hebrews chapter 11. Mm. We all know it well, you know. Faith is the substance of those yes. things hoped for mm -hmm. and the certainty of those things not yet, not yet seen. That's right. This is what the ancients were commended for. Exactly. I mean, so faith is the substance mm. of those things hoped for and the certainty of those things not, not yet seen. seen. That's right. And, and here we see this uh, crippled gentleman. Yeah. I mean, he had incredible faith. Yeah. <laughs> he, he had faith to see and believe and hope mm. that um, if they could get him close to Jesus, mm. that he would be, number one, that his sins would be forgiven, and number two, that he would be able to stand and walk. And I mean, I just want to say to you out there, to all the viewers, guys and, and, and ladies, we live in, in trying times. And I believe we're living in a time that uh, everything that we know is changing around us. I mean, incredibly. Yes, it's Technology true. is yeah. changing so fast. Yes. Economic totally. currencies are changing like yes. the wind. <laughs> I mean, we have threats of war from Russia, the USA. You name it, everything is changing incredibly mm. fast. And uh, if you look at all these things, it can be overwhelming. But I want to say to you, there is one solid rock. There is one <laughs> uh, pillar that yes. is steadfast. And he is the only one we can stand by, mm. and his name is Jesus. Amen. And I mean, we need to have that faith. We do. We need to have that attitude yes. and that right spirit, mm. uh, like the crippled gentleman he yes. had in, in Mark chapter 2. Yes. I mean, he was determined um, and believed that if he could get close beside the man Jesus, that he would be set free. And I want to say to you out there, that that's the key. 
No matter what you're going through today in your life, no matter economically, socially, I mean health-wise, no matter what's going on in your life, um, you need to get close to the man Jesus. Amen. And the only way we can get close to the man Jesus is walking and talking with him. That's it, in a nutshell. (laughs) You see, uh, you know, relationship with God is simply walking and talking with God. And reading His Word. And spending time in His Word. That's right. And, and, and raising your hands and praising Him. Exactly. And, and, and thanking Him. Mm, I mean. And, uh, you know, the Bible says, you know, in First Thessalonians, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, yes. for this is God's will for you. I mean. And so often when things are not going so well mm. in our lives, uh, the first thing that we do not do is give thanks. <laughs> it's the last thing we do. I mean, and you know, but here in First Thessalonians, Ross, mm. it says, "Give thanks in all circumstances, yes. for this is God's will for, for you." you. Yes. And so, I want to say, if you're going through tough times out there, that the key is number one: get close to the man Jesus. How do we get close to the man Jesus, Ross? Is by meditating on His, his word. word day and night. And do not Korea. depart from it, okay? Absolutely. Number one. Number two is uh, getting on our knees Absolutely. and humbling ourselves and praying mm-hmm. and uh, seeking His face. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love Jeremiah 29 verse 12. We all know Jeremiah yes. 29 verse 11. Yes. But Jeremiah 29 verse 12, 12 says, Then you will come yes. and pray to me and I will come, come down, down and listen to, to you. you. If you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Amen. I mean, and that is so true. I mean, you know, God has a great plan for us. He does. But yet, in that great plan, we need to uh, seek Him. Yes, we do. And we need to pray to Him. Yes. Because that's only when the Lord can come down and listen to us. Mm. And that's only when Jesus can be close to us mm. is through prayer and meditating on his word. Yes. And then out of that, we need to walk and talk with God. Mm. Because just as the crippled man understood if he could get close to the man Jesus was, yeah. um, he knew that his life would never be the same. Mm. Absolutely. And, and when, when we get close to Jesus... That's Amen. also when things change around us and Hallelujah. in us and we see miracles happen. Amen. And quite frankly, the whole world changes Amen. <laughs> when we get close to Jesus. Amen. Well, the, the key is this for us. You see, when we are in his presence, yes. everything is transformed. That's it. When we are with him, mm. revival breaks forth. Amen. When we walk with Him, yes. every sickness flees. Amen. That's true. And as you know, we've got our own experiences that we can pull Amen. from that is very similar to this, this scripture here Hallelujah. as well. That's right. Um, just as um, the, the uh, crippled man or, or yes. paraplegic, it says, um, had faith and he, yes. wanted, he wanted to get close to Jesus. We Amen. also have our own stories that can go... Uh, very hand in hand with that. Des, would you perhaps like to share a bit about that? Yeah, sure. You know, um, this is so relevant because we've witnessed this account in our own lives. <laughs> totally. I mean, um, uh, quite a few times yes. but we've witnessed it in Africa as we've mm. been ministering. Mm. Also in India, uh, we've witnessed it. Mm. Um, also in, in the Philippines as well. So, um, the, you know, people say, how is this scripture relevant <laughs> yeah. for today, the times we live in? But I mean, it is it is it's happening. We've seen it in many countries People around want to the get world. Close I to mean, Jesus. absolutely. Yeah. But um, I, I want to pick up on one event okay. um, that we witnessed. Yes. Uh, there, we were ministering in Africa. Yes. And um, there was a community of people yes. that were living in a valley. And uh, they were rejected by society. They were rejected by the church leaders at that time. They were. I mean, and they were considered the outcasts. That's right. um, The lepers of the city. city. Yeah. And um, so we said, man, we've got to go down there and see these people. Mm. Because Jesus um, never rejected 
the sinner or the leper. No, he did not. But rather Jesus was drawn to them. If you read the, the, the Gospel of Matthew, yes, Ross, it right. speaks so clearly that yeah. Jesus spent much time with the prostitutes, the yeah. tax collectors, the, lepers, the sinners. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. He also went to Simon the leper's home. That's exactly right. And he ate with Simon the leper. Exactly. And spent time no with worries. him. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't uh, you know, bound by that. But mm. in the custom of the Jews, that yeah. was an offense. What? You know, what are you doing? But yet we see the heart of God. Yes. Jesus was revealing the heart of God yes. towards the sick person, towards the AIDS victim, mm. towards the leper, right. towards the paraplegic. Mm. It was the heart of God Amen. that he was Amen. presenting. Mm. And he wasn't bound by tradition. He wasn't <laughs> bound by custom, yeah. but rather the spirit of God and God's mercy overrides all tradition. Amen. I agree with you. 100%. Amen. But yeah. there, there in Africa, um, we, we went down to this group of people. There was about 15,000 yes. 15, um, of these people yeah. that were all dying. Yes, they um, were. It was very sad. It, it was, was incredibly sad to oh, see. Yeah. I mean, uh, it you know, it was the first time I remember that I'd actually ever seen people that were dying of HIV AIDS and their flesh was actually eating off them and yeah. falling off them. Yeah. It, it, their flesh was rotting. It was it was incredibly yeah. emotionally hard to bear. Mm. I mean, and, uh, and my first thoughts were, man, uh, we better get out of here. Because it really was emotionally cutting you to the bone. It did. And you yeah. think, man, these poor people. That Lord, alone was really hard. It was really hard. And yeah. you think to yourself, man, I'm so inadequate. What can I do? Yeah. Man, I need to go yeah. and get medical help. I need to fly in doctors. Exactly. And I need to try and do something. Because mm. it seems so overwhelming. It was very overwhelming. Yeah, but yet, yeah. you know, it's funny how mm. when you, you see reality like this, straight away your thoughts are physical, natural. And you want to just call in doctors and do the physical thing. Yeah. But yet the Bible doesn't say that. Mm. Actually, the Bible speaks about this uh, paraplegic yeah. that um, he um, was in a bad state, mm. but yet they brought him to the man Jesus. Mm. I mean, so that's what was happening. There we walked him down and among these people, over yeah. 15,000, yeah. and they asked us to come and speak to them. Yes. I mean, and so we started preaching the word, and the people just gathered oh, by the thousands, they all gathered of them. Like a huge crowd. Yeah, absolutely. Huge. And I mean, there I never forget, and we were standing under like a shanty. Yes. I mean, you know, and it was very hot, it was yes. in the day. But in saying that, um, it was up on a hill. So people, you could look down over all the people. That's right. And uh, people were coming that were, were sick, that were dying. Mm. You know, there were blind people. There were lepers among them. Um, you know, there was just the, the worst of the worst you can imagine yeah. we saw. That's right. I mean, I'll never forget that um, the, the, the crowds were, were sick people were so close around us. Mm. They were by the thousands surrounding yeah. Um, the place where I was preaching from. That's right. And I mean, that's great. Uh, but uh, <laughs> all of a sudden, I saw these four men carrying a man on a stretcher. Mm. And um, they were going to put him, uh, you know, at the front yeah. by, by where I was preaching. Okay. But yet, he mm. was way, way back from me. Yeah. I mean, and so, uh, you know, he was moving his hands and saying, no, 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 don't leave me here. Okay. I need to get closer. I remember uh, him yelling out, I need to get closer mm. to the man named Jesus. And um, so in that, they decided, let's go up here. So they climbed up on the roof of where I was preaching, yes. and they, they all lifted the stretcher That's up, this right. man on the stretcher they up onto the, the roof, all the tin and, off, didn't and they, they? they pulled the tin off thought, what of the roof, and it was a commotion, <laughs> yeah. and I, I just carried you on preaching, going, yes. I just carried on preaching, I thought, well, what's going on here, <laughs> and I mean, all of a sudden, they got rope, and um, right. they lowered him down, yeah. lowered him right down beside where I was preaching, exactly. right beside me, right and there he was. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I, got a bit, I was thinking, yes, this man's got faith. I mean, but that's exactly what he had. Exactly. He had faith, and he wanted to be close to where the name of Jesus was yes. being proclaimed. Yes. He wanted to receive mm. um, faith and receive the healing of God through the anointing mm. of the words of Jesus. And amazing. so it was really amazing. <laughs> yeah. And so from that, um, as I was preaching, 
um, and he was looking at me and he was listening. Mm. And I remember just um, looking at him and I says, and I looked at him and I, and I just saw in his eyes, this gentleman, he was just absorbing and he was taking in everything taking that everything. was being said yeah. from, the, from the word of God. Yeah. And he was just uh, sucking it in. It was mm. like he was thirsting and hungering for it and he mm. was receiving it and it was Amen. filling his spirit. Yes, and it amen. was like life coming into yes, him. Yes. I mean, and he was sitting up in his stretcher, mm. which is a miracle. I mean, and he was so just sick and so thin. Mm. And, um, and I remember just carrying on preaching. And all of a sudden, I turned and looked at the man. And there all of a sudden, God just says, tell him to stand and walk. <clears throat> and I just said to him, in the name of Jesus Christ, pick up your stretcher, get up. Stand and walk yes. and pick up your stretcher. Mm. For God has seen your faith. Amen. And your sins are forgiven. Now go in peace. I mean, and that's exactly what happened, Ros. You remember? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. And, and then there, it was like, it just, he stood up and then there was a, a, an ecstatic, <laughs> amazing response from Absolutely. all the people that were there. And then there was, there was just people constantly coming and going and coming and going and bringing more and bringing more and bringing more people and bringing as many people as close to the front as possible so that Des would go and pray for them as well. It was, it was a very, very humbling time. A Amen. very emotional time. You Amen. had to really sort of like control yourself. Otherwise, yes. you know, your tears could get away That's on right. you with exactly what you saw in front of you with Amen. your own eyes. It was a very, very emotional time. Yes. But with God's strength, we got through that and were able to focus on, on um, the work of the Lord and carry on. But um, the, the Lord blessed that time amazingly. Yes, amen. There was, I remember Des, there was a lady that came up yes. with one leg way shorter than the other, yes. and the Lord right. healed them and, and grew one of those legs to be amen. exactly the same size. And yes. other ladies who had bad hips, yes. they got healed, That's and right. blind and deaf people got healed. Right. It was just healings just sort of like erupting That's everywhere. Right. Yes. It was amazing. Yes. And the people were so ecstatic that Amen. we would come to them yes. the outcasts yes. the nobodies that's right the 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 filth as it were yes they were so ecstatic and so humbled that yes. made it even so much more humbling for us that's right being there that they were so humbled that's right but t carry on with the story i'm taking oh, over <laughs> Uh, it, it really was one of the most humbling things, I think, in, in yeah. my ministry. Ooh, I will never forget. That we've never, never. forgotten or um, never. ever can forget. Because, no, never. Uh, I, you know, I was so overwhelmed at the, the, the poverty, but also the sickness that I, I'd seen. Yeah. It was, it was so blatant. It was bad. I mean, and these poor people were suffering incredibly. Incredibly. Um, and you felt so helpless. You felt that, you know, man... They had nothing. Yeah. Nothing. They're sleeping in cardboard boxes. Yes, exactly. And, and you were lucky if you had a shanty. You were lucky. Many of them had nothing. No, that's true. You know, it was really tough, you know, yeah. and rugged. But in saying that, Ross, I mean, uh, you know, God suddenly just came through incredibly. Yes, he did. And, you know, when I got my attitude right and st stopped trying to look through natural eyes... And wanting to bring in doctors, but rather got my eyes upon Jesus yes. and upon the, the the faith I saw among these people. Yes, um, that's true. You know, the Spirit of God just came down and, and sovereignly just breathed, breathed over these people like mm. you can't believe. You know, and legs grew. Um, there were the people with leprosy. That, you know, leprosy yeah. eats away your fingers. That's right, and, your, that. yeah. Yeah. and all of a sudden, there were many lepers that came. I mean, and... Um, God just touched, you know, lepers, yep. and all of a sudden their fingers grew immediately in front of us, and people were just overwhelming to see what took place. And I remember even AIDS victims yes, got healed. Absolutely, you can heal AIDS. Let me say Amen. that <laughs> God can heal anything. Absolutely. Amen. God can heal those with AIDS. If you're a victim of yes. AIDS and you're watching now, yes, Lord, God can Amen. heal you. Absolutely. 
believe it, have Amen. faith. Just like this guy who yes. had faith to come Amen. and get close to Jesus. That's right. He was prepared to get lowered down from a yes. roof even. That's right, that's right. God can heal you. That's right. Yeah. yeah, I want to just challenge all the viewers out there. You know, it doesn't matter what your sickness is, whether you have cancer, yes. whether you have epilepsy, whether you have sugar diabetes, whether you have you know, Parkinson's disease, whether you have um, dementia, whether you have, you know, um, TB, whether you have exactly. meningitis, yeah. it doesn't matter what no. uh, sickness is upon you. No. I've got good news for you because Jesus um, paid the price on the cross Amen. and he took upon himself yeah. every known disease that can mm. come upon mankind. And um, by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. And so what Ros is saying there to you is that don't lose heart. Don't lose uh, if heart. If you are a cripple, if you are a, you know, in a wheelchair, yes. um, I want to say to you that God is able to Amen. touch you. Yes, he Just is. as God healed me as I was a paraplegic That's right. in 2000. That's there true. the doctors told me mm. we will ne I will never walk again. That's right. But yet God touched me. Amen. So what Amen. I'm trying to say to the viewers out there, no matter what your sickness is, it's not a problem to God. No. No sickness is too big for God. No. No sickness is the Lord is not able to heal and to set you free Amen. from. And so I just want to encourage you out there that the Spirit of God is moving now, that yes. the anointing Amen. of God is coming upon you wherever you are. Whatever your sickness is, I want you to raise your hands to Jesus. Yes. I take, take authority on, over every demonic influence. Amen. Jesus. I bind that spirit of infirmity in your life. Amen. I speak against the spirit of cancer. I break, I bind the works and the, the cells of cancer within your body. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. Right Amen. now, brain tumors are being removed. Right now, um, womb cancer has been broken and removed Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right now, thyroid cancer has been removed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right now, I speak against prostate cancer. Cancer. Right now, prostate cancer has been removed in the name of Jesus. Right now, throat cancer has been removed in the name of Jesus. And right now, I say skin cancer has been broken and removed in the name of Jesus. All right, now I want to say receive your healing through the authority of Jesus Christ. I pray right now in the name of Jesus for um, epilepsy. For those that have epilepsy, in the name of Jesus Christ, I break that curse. I speak against Amen. that spirit of epilepsy in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, for your healing hand upon them. I pray, Holy Spirit, for AIDS victims. Amen. Lord, I break that curse. I take authority over AIDS in the name of Jesus. Right now, Amen. receive your healing. I speak, Lord, the blood of Jesus into your bones, into your bloodstream. I pray now that HIV will be eaten up, that your white blood cells would increase, Lord, a thousandfold. And Lord, that no longer would there be HIV virus within your bones and within your body. Right now, receive you healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray, Lord, for sugar diabetes. I bind, I break that curse in the name of Jesus. I pray healing into you. I pray, Lord, stabilization into the pancreas. I pray the pancreas would produce the Amen. correct amount of insulin and you would be free from the curse, free from the influence of sugar diabetes in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray your healing anointing. Receive it now. There it is. Right now, receive your healing with those conditions in the name of Jesus. Right Amen. now, Lord, brain tumors be gone. Right now, Lord, receive your healing. I pray for TB. Right now, I break the curse of TB. Amen. I speak life in the name of Jesus over TB. Amen. Over meningitis in the name of Jesus, receive your healing. Over allergy reactions in the name of Jesus, receive your healing. Right now, I pray, Holy Spirit, just minister through the blood of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, set the captives free and bring healing upon them through the righteous blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.